Hello, Jamie Rogers here from Craft Mania, and today we are back with a brand new bundle to tempt you with. Now, today we will be looking at four incredible stamps by the 2Js company, and we have them for you on a great bundle that's going to save you quite a few pennies, but you can, of course, buy them individually as well. Before we move on and have a little look at these, just a quick reminder that if you haven't already, please click subscribe and tap the little bell notification button so that you're told when all our videos drop. I can promise you now we have a lot more videos coming to our YouTube channel and I don't want you to miss out on a single thing. Now today, in actual fact, on this little video, I'm going to be sharing with you a couple of cards that I'm truly not meant to share with you. I, I was not meant to. As you've probably seen already, and if you haven't, go check it out. We've just started our recipe of inspiration series on our YouTube channel. And we've done part one, part two is coming, and it's not far away. And in part two, we'll be taking a look at the technique used to create a couple of the cards I'll be sharing with you today. I'm not gonna be able to tell you today what I've used and how I've done it. So you need to watch out for part two, and I don't want you to miss it. So that's why we need to make sure you've subscribed, you've got your notifications, and you don't miss out on a single thing. But let's have a little look at these, shall we? These are our four 2J stamps, and I promise I'll take you to our overhead in a second. We'll go through them all. I've got lots of samples to share with you. I'm not gonna do any major demos in this video, but we'll talk about a couple of the techniques that I've used, and I'll show you the bits that I've done, so that if you wanna recreate what I've been doing, then you absolutely can do. As always, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. Now, our bundle here, our stamps, these are four, four by four approximately, clear stamps in one bundle designed by, as I say, the 2J's company. They're incredible designs. They should recommendedly retail pricely, sell for six pounds and 79 pence and being honest with you i found them dearer than that in quite a few places genuinely so even at 679 they should possibly be a little bit north of that but we have them on offer for you and if you'd like to buy them individually you can do they're six pounds and 11 pence i know that's an odd number isn't it i'm sorry but that's how it works out six pounds 11. If you would prefer, you can buy all four of the designs in one bundle for just $22.99. So you're saving quite a bit. Now, if you're new to us and you've never seen me ramble on about our bundles or our offers or our products or anything else here on YouTube, or Facebook, or whatever you're watching us, then you might not know this, but at Craft Mania, your PMP in the UK is completely free if you spend over five pounds. So there's no looking at this and thinking, oh, well, that's $22.99 but I need to stick on four or five quid for the postage, three or four quid for the postage. No fear of that. $22.99 will get these delivered to your door completely free of charge. Now, if you live internationally, and we know an awful lot of our viewers do, we literally send parcels all around the world weekly. Don't worry, your PMP is capped at just £10. If we can actually find a way to get these two cheaper than £10, then we will refund you the difference. So the most you will possibly pay is £10. If it costs over £10, which being 100% honest with you, with the cost of postage the way it is nowadays, it does tend to, at Craft Mania, we will pay that for you. So the most you will pay is £10. If you've got any questions, pop onto the website, have a little look under the customer service tab, and it'll come down and it'll tell you how all of our pay &P works and any sort of questions like that you've got. But if you have got questions, pop them in the comments, I'll do my best to answer them for you. So with no further ado, let's have a little look at these stamps and let's show you some samples. So the first stamp we're looking at today is the periwinkle design. Now I think this is absolutely gorgeous genuinely in love with this set what we have in here is we've got our large swirly branch with our three flower heads on here which i think is really lovely incredibly detailed and gorgeous design then if we flip this round you can see that we also have a matching slightly larger single flower now this is great because between these sets we can use them as our main focal point we could make up borders with them we could stamp them all around the edge of a card we really can go to town on sort of decorating with these and scaling it up everywhere from a small card right the way through to scrapbook pages home decor or anywhere in between then on top of that we've got this lovely little sentiment and we've got today is a spe oh, sorry try again today is special because of you 
which I think is really genuinely lovely. I feel I could be using that on a scrapbook page for a nice photo. I could be using that on a gift tag for the sort of bag for the present. I could be using this on the inside of the card, the outside of the card. I love the mixture of fonts. You've got that sort of very block lettering and the more swirly lettering, which really sort of matches in with the swirls that are found throughout the stamps. I just think this is a really beautiful, essential set that I'm going to come back to time and time and time again. Now let's have a little look at what we've created with this, shall we? So real quick and simple card, and I think sometimes that's quite important that we can do these. And I'll show you actually how quick and simple this is, and we'll have a little play. But really, it's all about just playing with one colour. Now my colour of choice for this card is this. Now this is our Versifying Claire, and this is Shady Lane. Now I think this is beautiful. I love rich greens. It reminds me of posh department stores without naming any names. And I just think it's a really beautiful one to be working with. You're gonna find this used through quite a few of my cards and I'll tell you every time I've used this one. But to be honest, if you haven't found the Versifying Claire inks before, we've got a whole host of these on the website. I believe, I think I can safely say, we carry the complete collection of colors. Um, but they are just beautiful links to work with. They are uh, waterproof, so if you do wish to stamp and colour with them, you absolutely can do. We'll be doing that shortly. We'll play around with some watercolour markers and show you how that it won't bleed, which is really, really handy. They're also incredibly detailed inks, and you can see that through that first stamp, can't you? How stunning does that look on its own already? So to do your frame, and it's up to you, you might not wish to use a stamp press. I quite like a stamp press, but I do have a block to one hand as well. And if I'm not doing it on camera, I'd probably use a block because I'd hide anything that I weren't happy with. Um, but it's quite nice that with a stamp press, if I do miss a bit, I can go back and redo it. But to just work around a panel like this, you can see how quickly this would actually come together to make up the main focal point to your card. It really doesn't have to be complicated. And we can just direct it in, see where we want it to be, the lid can hold in place, and then we can go down in that area. And it's as simple as that. How easy is this to form your panels, to go around the edges and make your actual cards? And I say make your actual cards because like this one, if we were to, and this isn't a card blank, it isn't the right size, I've not scored it, so please don't do what I'm doing. But if we looked at that and formed that actually into your card, maybe we could do another stamp up this side to coordinate and then add a big circular die in the middle, perhaps. How easy would that be to actually form your card? We could mask it off if that's what we were heading for, or we could have continued it all the way around. You know, we often think a card's got to be decorated on the front, but there's no reason why that can't flow through to the reverse. Or of course, we could go the other way and put this on the inside and make that our insert if we prefer. Stamp a little verse in here and you've got the most beautiful insert. Maybe on the cover of the card, we could actually color one in and decorate that instead. So as you can see, very, very easy to do. For this card, all I've then done is use the same ink because I wanted it to coordinate perfectly. And I've blended that round a couple of pieces of card to make the panels that you can see here as my mats and layers. I've added in a little bit of ribbon to finish this off. And then I've added on one of my stamps. This isn't one that comes in the stamp that we're looking at today. This is off the sheet of stamps that, or one of the sheets of stamps I've designed. But this one says, wrinkles show the roadmap of our lives. Don't hide them, wear them with pride, which I always think is quite a lovely sentence and quite a nice one to add on to your projects. Um, just so you know, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, I'd really like that stamp, or where do I go to get all of the bits he's mentioning as he's going through this? If you pop onto the website, there is a little YouTube tab on the top bar. I think it's about the fifth or the sixth thing in. If you click the YouTube tab, it will open up to a page and you will see each of the recent videos and all of our future videos will have a, a little section. You can click that and it will open up and all of the things we're talking about today, when we talk about the inks, when we talk about the pens a little later on, all of the bits I'm gonna talk about with you, including in your stamp bundle will be on that page so you don't have to go searching we carry over 10,000 items at craft mania i don't want you to have to go and look for all of them to find the ribbon for instance so it will all be on one page you don't have to search so having a little chat about where else we could take this stamp and working more with it how about just bringing in some color and all I've done, and we'll talk about these shortly, but we're gonna use the watercolor pens and we're just gonna use them to color in just the flower heads of our lovely periwinkle. 
In the middle of this card, I've used my butterfly framed circular die. I've then used the sentiment that comes with it. Today is special because of you. I've added a little ribbon on here. And then card wise, this lovely lilac card. This is from the bundles of cards that we've recently released, which are currently on offer throughout January. You get 50 sheets in a packet. Uh, they're £4.49 per pack. And you buy three packets and you get one free. So it works out that you get 200 sheets of card for £13.47p. Again, if you'd like to find that offer, pop onto the website, look under the YouTube tab, you'll find that video in there. Or of course, you can see the video on our YouTube channel as well. Then moving on. Now this one, oh, I'm in a bit of a blue mood at the moment. And I know that sounds like I'm miserable or unhappy. I'm not, it isn't about that at all. I'm in a blue mood, as you know, everything I keep making is in blue. Um, I love blue, and I really do. And I love blues and creams and blues and whites. And I'm going to be truthful with you. I've gone on a bit of an ink pad splurge this week. I, did you know, I might not, <laughs> I might be alone. But every now and again, you look at your collection and you think, do you know what? I haven't got many stamps or I haven't got many folders or I haven't got many inks. Well, to me this week, it's all been about the inks. So you're going to see that we're going to be using the Craft Fusion inks. Obviously, we're using the Versafine inks. And I've also added this one to my collection. I'm building my Distress Oxides. Um, and this one just spoke to me. It's the prize ribbon. It's a beautiful blue. And as you can see, I've used it to stamp with for my actual periwinkle stamp. I've then used the same colour and blended the ink around the edges so that we've got that soft, subtle shade. I've used it on the butterflies as well and I've stamped with it for the wording. So it all goes together. The bit you might not see quite so well is in the middles of each of the flowers. I just wanted something. I didn't want a lot. I just wanted something to separate them and add in something else. So I bought in our metallic markers. These are our fine tip metallic markers. These are on offer on the website at the moment. Genuinely amazing pens. They work brilliantly on black cards. You will have seen our design team member Lynn Lewis doing blog posts and sharing cards with these quite a lot, as well as Ian, to be honest. They are just great pens. Uh, they're great for colouring over your die cuts as well. They look good on black card. And as you can see, they make just that lovely little metallic gold dot to the middles of each of my flowers. So again, you'll find them on the same page on the under the YouTube channel for today's video if there's something you would like to see or know more about. Then moving on, oh, we're onto the card I'm not meant to tell you about. This is the top secret card, the one that we're not meant to be showing you. And there's two of these to share with you, uh, but this is the first one. So I'm gonna bring this in. Now, as I said, I'm not allowed to tell you anything about how this is created other than watch out for our recipe of inspiration video, which will be part two. It will be dropping any day. It's not far away, I promise you that. So it won't be long till you'll find out how to do this. But this is a very cool, to me it looks a bit like cracked glass kind of thing, I don't know. It just looks a bit, I'll be honest, over here in the UK, and if you don't, you know, I'm sure we've all got them or seen them, but we have stores here, and I'm thinking of B&M's, if anyone's sort of wondering, where they do lots of ornaments made out of that sort of mirror-y, cracked glass style, and then it's coloured. And this really reminds me of that style. I don't quite know what to call it, to be honest. So pop in the comments if you know of the name. But to me, it's a bit like cracked glass. And this, of course, is using our same stamp, going all the way around the panel, and then comes in the magic. But I can't tell you about the magic, can't tease you any further, but that will be coming shortly. So moving on to the next one, and let's do the rose version of that next so that you can see. So we'll do the rose stamp. So this is do, 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 a rambling rose, which is quite funny because I'm holding the rambling rose and I'm the rambling Jamie. I apologise. Uh, but this is another gorgeous set because we've got this corner rose on this one. And obviously this is a one large stamp and then we've got two little sentiments. Every day is a new beginning and you're special. Again, I love these. I just think they've really fought out the sentiments they're giving you. They're usable, they're versatile, they're gonna come in time and time again. The corner stamp itself, to me, is a game changer. And you're gonna know this, if you've been watching me for long or you've purchased my designs, you'll find this with a lot of what I design. I love corner elements, whether they're dies, whether they're stamps, whatever they are, because of quite often I work with circles and I find that the edges of the card are then empty and I need something to put in them. 
This to me is the perfect answer. We can stamp it in one color. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. We could color it to match the colors of the topper that we're putting in the middle or the project that we're putting in the middle, or we could just do opposite corners. I also really like with a corner that you can use it on the outside of your card and then you can take it to the inside of your card, use it around your insert, and you've still got the gap in the middle, depending on the size of your card, to add in your message and your sentiment and all of that bit in your verse. So to me, corners are always a true essential. And I'll bring in a couple of cards to share with you. Now this again, same technique as the one we were just looking at. So I can't tell you nothing about it, I'm sorry. But it does show you another use for our beautiful rose. And it shows you how gorgeous that will look actually on a rectangle card. Because of all you might think, well, I need to be doing squares with this, but you absolutely don't need to. The verse, of course, will be on the same page. So if you like the look of this one, birthdays are the best days. You can grab hold of it there. And I've also used the decal edge oval and the pierced edge oval. These come in with two different sets of my dies, um, but I'll put them onto the page as well, just in case you want to have a little look at those. They're lovely for working in the middle of the rectangles. And it's quite nice to have the two different sizes that nest together. So it's just a different idea for you. Then if we have a little look at, oh, now this one I wanted to talk to you about. This one is a completely different um, adventure. Let's use the word adventure. So I'd taken a, a square of card and I had stamped my two corners and I had done that with the same green that we've been looking at. This is the shady lane again. And I then used my watercolour pens or markers, I should call them, to go in and colour in. And I did all of my colouring. It looked lovely. Very, very nice. I was very pleased with it. And then I realised I'd missed a very tiny corner. And I picked up the wrong colour. And I added the wrong colour to my rose. And it looked awful. And it was all my fault. I mean, this is what happens when you're talking and grafting. Or it is in my case, anyway. So I thought, well, this has gone wrong. What am I going to do about it? So instead of throwing it away, which I think is so often quite tempting, which isn't the end of the world, because in honesty, I've lost five minutes of my life and a piece of card. You know, we can move on from that. It's not the end of the world. But it's quite nice to actually try and take something and create something different with it. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I did here. And you might think I've gone slightly off the rails, but nothing new there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a piece of card. Now, imagine I've stamped, I've coloured on this card. I then knew that I weren't happy with it. So I sprayed it with water to blend out all of them colours. And I'm going to screw mine up first because it'll be easier than spraying it with water and then screwing it up and getting covered in water. But I screwed it all up because I knew that I, it wasn't that I didn't want it or that I weren't happy with it. What I wanted to do was distract the eye from where I had made my mistakes and where my colours had gone wrong and where my blending was going. And I wanted to take it in more of a shabby chic look. And I love doing this. So instead of just parting with it, by screwing it up, we've created this texture. We've given it this shabby chic look. And to me, that's really cool. And I do quite a lot of this. I really like doing this with a Miri card because Miri card gives a whole different effect to it. And it, again, looks a bit like a broken mirror, which is a really cool look to it. You can also stamp on the Miri card. You can stamp on the paper, just the same. If you're using a uh, mirror card, then of course you want to stamp stays on or a permanent ink to make sure it stays in place. But by sort of screwing it up, a mirror card is a bit more difficult than our card is. But you're screwing it up, you can create this great look to it and this different texture. So I've got this piece screwed up. I've got it soaking wet. And I had, of course, as I mentioned, coloured already so that it was sort of designed as, as such. And that was how we were working with it. So with this one, to share with you the colouring aspect of this, because I'd already got my colours slightly bleeding out from my flowers, because I really had drenched the paper, I felt I needed to add colour into the open areas, because this bit here was still very crisp and open, and I needed to add more shading into that one. So I'd been using my watercolour markers, and I thought, well, actually, these are great for using in many different ways. So if we bring in some colours, let's go for, oh, let's go for this one. So this is our lilac. So all I did was took the colour and put it down onto the mat. So I'm working on top of a blending mat at this point, just so you know, I'm not colouring all over my desk, which has happened, but isn't in this case. And I'm going to mist that with some water. And then we're going to take our panel and we're just going to start bringing this in and laying this down. Now you've possibly seen this done before. It's not particularly a new thing to go down and pick up colours with water on them, but it's just quite a nice way to show you 
how you can start colouring in your papers and what I did on my background. So we'll take away that lilac and we'll just bring in a cloth here so I can get rid of that bit because I want to add down the next shade. And then we're going to bring in some orange because of I want you to see a bit of a contrast. So again, we'll bring down the orange, put this in place. Now the pens I'm using, these are the Nova watercolour markers and they are on special offer on the website. I can't remember how much they are, I'm sorry, I should have remembered that bit. Um, but these genuinely are ones I'm using an awful lot. They've been used through several of the samples and you can see that we can do a lot with these. I'll show you them being used to colour in a second as well, so you see that part too. But you can see how you can bring these colours in. And if you're not happy with it on the top and you want it to blend a bit more, then just keep misting. But actually, I think that's kind of cool. I quite like this. Again, easy background, fun to create. Here's one I did just in plain, so you can see that you can do them. This was using the pink and the orange instead of the lilac and the orange. But this one, the dry one, looked a lot like that when I began. But it will carry on sort of bleeding out as such. And it, the colours on the cracks will go slightly lighter. And this is what we would end up with. Now, just to bear in mind, that that's how we created the background to this one. So again, white card, but actually all of this color, all of this texture, all of this shabby sort of look coming from that. The panel in the background, this little mat, that's done in exactly the same way, putting the color down, picking it up, but just done for the mat instead. Then the coloring aspect with these, because of why we've got them, let's talk about all the different bits or a couple of the different bits I've found we can do with these. These, of course, are great for colouring. Now, we can take these direct to our project if we would like to, and we have got a bullet tip at one end. So if you want to go in and do more detailed work, you can do. Or, of course, we can be using the brush tip to go straight in and colour over the top of our flowers or our pieces. And that's fine to do so. I, again, tend to work off of a mat, and I will put down my colour, and I bring in a water brush. I add a little bit of water with it, and then I can go and pick that up and start doing my painting. And you'll see it's a lot softer and quite lovely. But this is good because once this is dry, we could then go back in and add with the pen more shading over the top of it. And I mentioned that we'd look at how that card was uh, created. One of the first ones I shared with you. I'll get out again in a second. But this is all it was. And how quick can we pull this together? We did the stamping in seconds, didn't we? And then we're just popping in that colour nice and quickly nice and simply and if you wanted to you could color in the leaves there are greens in the set of pens but actually i didn't want to i wanted to keep those open and at the same tones as the card but it's just a really nice way to show you how quick you could be decorating this so again as a small card you look at we did them four flowers in a matter of seconds we could have this card done literally in a couple of minutes if that's the style we'd like to go for and to me it looks a little bit laura ashley quite expensive quite luxury but quite easy to do so we'll place them out of the way for the minute we'll go back to that card just so you can see one last sort of flash of that one to give you an idea of that's how that would end up if we did all of the pieces around the edge slightly larger than the card we was working on obviously and of course in a square which again is good because it shows we can do them in any size and of course added in our circle in the middle then back to our rows because we don't want to lose that one so we was onto this card I added a little butterfly on here just to finish that off and then down on the corner we've got life is a wonderful celebration enjoy it then bringing in our next card so very polar opposite lots of different styles this one again same stamp and bringing back in our prize ribbon ink all I've done is stamped four of the rows and then built up in the middle I've used the same ink to blend underneath of my actual circular frame. I've used the same ink to do the mat and layer in the reverse here. And I've used the same ink to go round our panel and to do our stamping of your special on the top and to colour our fairy as well. So it's all just tied together from the one colour, but very easy to do. Then if we move on, we'll show you the next one. So our next set of stamps, this one is our wild rose set. Now this, again, gorgeous design, great for being used in any direction. We really could spin this one to wherever we want to. Also comes with two sentiments. We've got wishing you a wonderful day and we've got life is a wonderful celebration. Enjoy it. Now this one is really good for layering as well. So if you would like to cut and layer, this is a great way to do it. So very easy to sort of cut round, no big sort of areas to cut into very simple to do and i think it looks really luxury to lift that up slightly and have it stand above the leaves the actual card 
very clean and simple, very changeable in shape. You know, we could go off into any tangent. We could have done more of these coming down if we wanted, alternating them and layering them. We could add in more flowers by placing them across the leaves if we wanted to. Many ways we could dress this one up, but I actually really liked it kept quite plain and simple. Coloured again with our watercolour markers, very easy to do. And on the bottom here, we've got there's nothing more valuable than friendship, which is actually a very true sentiment. And I think, again, a really lovely one. And we'll look at that on the next set of stamps. On top of that, I've added in these little dewdrops. These are great value. You get literally hundreds of them in a little bag and they're very inexpensive. And they come in clear and we also do a coloured version. I'll make sure they're on the same page because I think actually when we're doing quite clean and simple cards, it's quite nice to have something to break up the, the space but doesn't steal the show, does it? It's not too... OTT, they just blend in, you see the colour of the card come through, but they're just a really subtle but yet elegant looking decoration. Then on to our next one. So our next set here, or our next card here, is again very much a simple one. This again is created with our prize ribbon, and I've just taken the stamp and I've stamped over. I did a whole A4 sheet, and then I cut my frames. I did a second inlay of a frame and coloured that with a prize ribbon, and then I just took my frame over the sheet of card and put it down where I wanted it to be to frame the part that I thought looked the nicest. And then I used other pieces for other projects that hopefully I'll get to share with you shortly. On top of that, we've got wishing you a wonderful day and a little butterfly down on the corner here and some vellum just softening the sort of bridge between the sort of two sides and of course the place to hold the panel. Then on to the next one from this set. And this again, same idea, same concept, but going quite large instead. And this is what I love. And I wanted to show you how this one stamp could be used to make bigger projects. Again, as a scrapbooker, I think it's quite lovely to know that I could take a stamp like this. I could do this all over my 12 by 12 and it's going to look like a luxury background. For this one, I coloured it in actually with alcohol markers, which I'm not convinced you're meant to do with distress oxides. Um, but I've never seen that you can't. I've never seen that you can. But I gave it a go. I was quite happy with the results I was using old pens so it wasn't the end of the world uh, but it was quite a nice way to blend them out and I thought it looked quite lovely very easy to do again because we're just sticking to one color I've added a ribbon on here now I'm going to be honest with you I would have liked some navy ribbon but I'd run out I've used that on the next card I'm going to share with you and I'd run out but if you're looking at this and thinking I don't know why he's got a cream bow I would have liked navy so I need to pinch some more navy, navy ribbon from the shop I've already got my eye on a lovely satin one that's got a sheer middle and satin edges and it's already in my shopping basket to make sure that I get it next time I'm in there and then on top of this one we've got life is a wonderful celebration enjoy it then moving on then let's share with you our fourth set of stamps and our last set this one is absolutely lovely have a look at this. So with this one, we have got our large floral piece again. So we've got our four flowers put together in that little bouquet. And what I love with this, and you might not see it so well on this actual stamp, is the way the leaves and the foliage appear throughout the actual design. Like here in the middle, there's a big bit there. I don't know how well you'll see that. But to me, that's really lovely because it makes it look more authentic, more real. And when we're adding in colour, it's quite nice to have that little pop of green in the middle there to break up the colours of the flowers. And I just think that's a really lovely touch. It's not something I've seen done very often. You've then got your stemmed flower and you've got a separate flower head. So again, making your borders, making up bigger projects, using this for backgrounds, great to do that. You've then got your two different sentiments and we've got the first one. There's nothing more valuable than friendship. And on the side here, you've got best friend. So again, we're really thinking about using those on the outside, the inside, the gift tag, carrying that theme through our project. A few simple cards here. My sentiment seems to have moved on this one. But here is our first one. Very simple to do. I cut the circle out for a different project and I didn't want to throw it out because I really liked the way the circle sat on the panel of cream card. So I've popped it through and I've embossed it with our clocks embossing folder. You will find that on the same page on the website. I've stamped in the background my lovely stamp and I've added the best friend on the side here and done a little bit of blending around it. Now I haven't bought this ink up with me actually, uh, but this one and one of the future ones I'll be sharing with you are stamped and created using the Nautical Memento ink pad. I can't remember that, I think it's Nautical Breeze if I remember rightly. But again, I'll put it on the page so you can see it, but it's a lovely blue. And of course, as we know with Memento inks, we can color them in with alcohol markers and they won't bleed. So a very good ink for you to have a collection of. 
I'll skip forward and I'll share this one with you. This again, same colouring, coloured in with alcohol markers, little additions put on around the design with a white gel pen. And you've got every day is a new beginning. And in the background, I've used our lovely script stamp as well, which again will be on the same page if you'd like to get hold of that one. Then our last two cards, I promise, and then I'll stop waffling. This one is created using our Fusion Ink Pads, and you'll possibly have seen on my Facebook page, I've been using these an awful lot. We have card demos coming up with them, so again, make sure you've subscribed and got that notification bell ticked so that you get to see the cards and demos coming up with the Fusion Ink Pads. But this one very easily just stamped around the edges, a little bit of blending to sort of carry that in, and then I added on my butterfly oval in the middle here this butterfly die actually comes in with the decal edges and the or, or the pierced edge i can never remember which one it comes with but it's in with the center i think the pierced one but again i'll put the sets on that page so you can have a look but just so you know that will come with one of the layers and then the other layer is in the other die that will be there for you then on top of that i've added scent with love which is actually one of our little wordies we do a whole collection of wordy sheets that you can cut sentiments out of and layer onto your projects and they're just a really nice way to actually bring in quite a bold statement of a of a panel and i quite like the way they look then moving on we'll show you the next one and the last card i'm going to share with you today this again very clean and simple very elegant using just the stamp stamping that down in the corner bringing in the your special from another set and adding that onto the side stamped in our versifying pair and then coloured in with our glitter brush markers. Now, I haven't brought them up to share with you today because I think we'll be doing more with them in the future, but they are already on the website and there's lots of colours to choose from. And hopefully you can see the sheen that they create. Isn't that gorgeous? And I've used one of the, the glitter brush markers to just go around my panel so that my panel matches in perfectly with my flower. And this, again, is one of them cards that I think we could have done to any size or shape. So if you are somewhere where postage is a little bit higher and you wanted to shrink that down to a smaller card, I think you very much could do if you wish to. But it's quite a nice way to show that if you do prefer larger cards, you can go for larger shapes, larger areas. So they are our four designs. So let's bring these in. We've got all four of these designs to choose from. And uh, as I mentioned, you can buy them individually, but if you would prefer to buy them as a set, then of course that's where your biggest saving is. So once again, they should be 6 79 each, but they are reduced to just six pounds and 11 pence individually, or you can buy all four for 22.99. As I mentioned earlier, free PMP in the UK, so no fear about having to pay any staggering postage charges for here in the UK. And if you do live internationally, we can send them to you. That is capped at just 10 pounds. Again, pop on the website, see how that all works. But I have a feeling, and I might be wrong, but I think these are gonna fly out the door. So I'm not gonna give you a timeline on this bundle because I don't think they're gonna be here long enough for us to worry about ending the offer. So get in quickly, get them ordered. The website, www.craftmaniacrafts.com. Uh, of course, everything that I've told you, all of our details about this are in the description to this video if you've got any questions. And if you would like to order by phone instead of online, give us a call 01493 843 666. I think you're gonna love these. I think you're gonna be using these for many, many years to come. And if you do, I would love to see what you're doing with them. I've often confessed this, I am the nosiest crafter you will ever meet. And if you do get these and you do get creative or you've got any of the products available from Craft Mania, I would love it if you would jump onto our group and share with us what you've been creating. And our group is on Facebook, it's a closed group, and it's called Create with Craft Mania and Jamie Rogers. And as long as you're following the group rules, we would love you to share your posts and get interactive within the group and see what we're up to. It's also another great place to ask questions and crafty hints and tips and join in with all of the action that we've got going on there. Thank you very much for watching today and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly with the Recipes of Inspiration Part 2. Bye for now.